Hello, in this video, I am going to show you the pan gesture. So the pan gesture is very similar to the horizontal drag and vertical drag. It basically combines them. So if, for example, you have an image and you want to be able to put your finger on the screen and essentially drag it around. So maybe you, know, you have a separate gesture for zooming in on the image. And once you've zoomed in, you can't see all the image. So you want to be able to pan it, not just vertically or horizontally, but in both directions. This is very common in, you know, image gallery apps, whether it's Google Photos, whether it's, you know, even on like Facebook or Twitter. When you have an image, you open it up, if you zoom in, you want to, you know, look at some detail on it. You can't see all the image anymore. It's either you zoom out or you pan. So this is what this is really useful for. So the pan gesture, if you've done the horizontal, or if you've, I mean, if you watch the horizontal and vertical drag videos, this will feel right at home. If you haven't, I highly recommend that you watch those two first, because this is you know, sort of building on top of some of that. But I'm going to start from scratch, but it will help if you watch them as well. So to do it, you need to create a child gesture detector. And in here, you put the child or the widget itself as a child that you want the pan gesture to be attached to. Then you put on pan, and there's a few different ones. So there's on pan star, cancel, down, and update. The only two that I'm gonna be implementing in this one is stop, but the process is the same for all of them. So start, and this has drag, start details. And if I put details here, and I can do a print, and I'm gonna say start. Then I'm gonna say details. Sorry, this is meant to be the variable, not a string. So if I save that and I reload, so if I click here, as you can see, we, we say start. So this is just on the click, and it's giving the coordinates relative to the entire screen. So if it's closer to the left edge, it's closer to you know being zero. I probably can't quite get it at zero because you know trying to move. It's like less than a logical pixel, it's very difficult. And as you can see, so, but if we want to actually detect the drag, we need the update method. So if we copy and paste this, so instead of on pan star, it's going to be on pan update. This needs to be drag update details. And I'll change this to update as well. So if I save that and I reload, so if I click in the middle, of this image right there and if i drag it as you can see we are getting different values so if i drag in left and right it's mainly only affecting the x value if i drag it up there mainly only the y value if i drag it in like any direction we are getting values in the x and y so Again, I recommend you watch the vertical and horizontal drag videos to explain more about the significance of the minus, the sentence, the direction, and you know the you know the actual you know difference in values. Large value just means a faster drag. That's really all there is. So that's it. That's all you have to do to detect when you panned on a particular widget. What I want you to do as an extra task is implement the other pan methods. So that's down, end, and cancel, and I want you to try and figure out how to get the individual values for the X and Y pan. I'll give you a little clue. If you do dot, you can get some of its properties. But if you have any questions, feel free to pop me a message. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.